Good morning. Welcome to the Church of the Holy Apostles in Virginia Beach. My name is Jane Tucker. Today is Sunday, April 21st, 2024, the fourth Sunday of Easter. Holy Apostles was established 46 years ago to be a symbol of ecumenism, honoring both the Roman Catholic and Episcopal traditions. We have one worship service with two liturgies. Our worship is designed for you to experience both traditions. As our sign of commitment to Christian unity, we ask you to remain for both liturgies. A special note for those watching online, our Episcopal priest has recently taken a new position in Northern Virginia. This has resulted in a vacancy that we hope to fill soon. So if you know of any Episcopal priest that has a heart for ecumenism and is interested in a halftime position in Virginia Beach, please ask them to contact us. Have them check our, out our website page. Thank you. Monsignor Raphael Pepper will celebrate Catholic Mass assisted by Deacon Gary Harmeyer. Immediately following the Catholic Mass, Father Scott Baker will be celebrating the Episcopal Holy Eucharist. This service is being live streamed. We welcome everyone here and those watching at home. For those watching from outside of Virginia Beach, we invite you, if you are ever in the resort city, to stop by and experience our service. At communion time, if you're not receiving communion, please come forward for a blessing. For those here, we ask that you silence your cell phones. Please rise and greet those around you. Now, join us in, get, in singing our gathering song. This is the Feast of Victory, verse 1. morning good morning father together let us say a very good morning to our brothers and sisters who are joining us from your homes good morning to you all and today we celebrate a good shepherd sunday as well as vocation sunday in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the lord be with you and with your spirit let us now acknowledge our failures before god as so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Thanks. 
let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, and I invite the children and their adult leader to come forward. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name in, under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to the Lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Spirit. 
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. When I was a boy, there was one phrase I remember saying a lot. In fact, I probably said it at some point almost every day. It's a short phrase, only four words. Uh, I only said it to my mom or my dad. And when I said it, there was no joy in my words or enthusiasm in my voice, and my parents hated hearing it. What were the four words? Do I have to do it? <laughs> when one of my parents would say, Gary, clean your room, or pick up your clothes, or take out the garbage, or wash the dishes, or do your homework, and of course the list just goes on and on. Oftentimes my response would be, do I have to? For us Americans, the phrase, do I have to, is implicitly negative. We pride ourselves on the idea of freedom, the idea that we don't have to do anything we don't want to do. Of course, as we get older, we understand and accept that things, that being a responsible person means there are certain things we really do have to do. Some of these things are relatively easy and demand little of us, such as we have to drive on the right side of the road. But there are others, such as relationships, especially marriage and raising children, that can be extremely difficult and demanding. But even these difficult and demanding have-tos are not always absolute. That is to say, they don't hold in all cases, in all circumstances. So perhaps a more accurate phrase of describing these types of responsibilities may be to say, I have to, but only up to a certain point. A simple example is if a child is sick, they wouldn't have to take the garbage out to the street even if it was normally a have-to-do chore. An adult example would be a person who is an employee doesn't have to obey the boss if he or she is being asked to break the law. Or a clerk at a 7-Eleven doesn't have to protect the contents of the register if he or she is being held up at gunpoint. Even a married person doesn't have to stay living under the same roof with their spouse if that spouse is, ab is abusing her or him. In a way, whether our responsibility is great or small, there's almost always a point when our have to takes a back seat to something or someone else. You could say we just heard one of those scenarios described in our gospel passage. A hired man whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. If I took a poll of the people here and asked if you were the shepherd and if a snarling, threatening wolf came, would you hang around to protect those sheep? I expect some of you would, but many of you, perhaps even the majority, I think would be joining me in deserting the sheep. <laughs> After all, if you were the shepherd and you knew you were the only thing standing in the way of that wolf getting his meal, you may very well say to yourself, when I sign on to do this, I signed on to care for the sheep, take them out to pasture, make sure they had enough water, keep them together, make sure none got stolen, and watch for any disease or injury but I'm not losing my life over them. 
the shepherds have to care for them is no longer an absolute. The shepherd have reached the critical point where feeling he had to wasn't enough. But that, of course, is the crux of the story. Jesus uses this, this example to contrast him with a hireling whose sheep were not his own. Jesus makes sure we know that he's not some sort of hired man who isn't fully invested in those charged to his care. Instead, he is the good shepherd. Perhaps it might be better to say he's the perfect shepherd, the kind of shepherd that has no limits as to what he's willing to do to make sure his, his sheep are safe, cared for, and loved. What separates Jesus from the rest of us is he has no have-tos. Jesus does what Jesus does because he wants to. That's who he is, and that makes all the difference in the world. So understanding that about Jesus, where does it leave us, his followers? What are our responsibilities to Jesus, to his Father? When we do things for God, why do we do them? What's our motivation? What's our reasons for the choices we make? For, many Christi for much of Christianity's history, up to and including the present day, there has always been a tendency to put an emphasis on the have-tos when it comes to our faith. Why are you here this morning? Is it that you feel that you have to be here or otherwise it's a sin? Or is it that you want to be here because your faith adds value to your life? And at some point in our history, that tendency tipped nearly all the way to the one side, the side that resulted in people living in near terror of God, convinced that one wrong move, one slight fault, would bring down God's wrath and bring about some really terrible things. So many people try to please God simply to avoid his punishment. Here, faith is something embraced reluctantly, begrudgingly, and fearfully. Everything, has been, everything was done because it had to. Where do we stand? What is our motivation for doing what we do? If we only act a certain way because we have to or because we are forced to, then there's a good chance at some point we'll eventually turn and run. But hopefully we find a way to love God simply because we want to. If we can make that transition, who knows what might be possible. God showers us with love just because he wants to. Our goal should be to want to love him just because he loves us. Amen. Amen. Let us profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, O Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life of the last time. Amen. As the Good Shepherd tends his father's flock, so we ask God to help our brothers and sisters in need. That pastors and ministers guide their flocks with tender care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That governments carefully guard the safety and quality of food and water. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That young people 
preparing for confirmation and graduation, be strengthened for a life of loving service through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians spread the peace of Christ and the joy of Easter in every time and place. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this assembly share God's abundant feast with those who cannot be here, especially the sick and homebound. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace among the people and nations of the Middle East and in Ukraine, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin, Presiding Bishop Michael, Bishops Barry and Susan, Monsignor Raphael, Father Scott, and Deacon Gary, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, you sent your son to care for your flock. Hear and grant what we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the bread we offer, you fruit of the earth and work of men hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God, By the mystery of the salt and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the wine we offer, you fruit of the vine and work of men hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let's be Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you to humble and contract hearts. Lord, wash away our iniquities. Thank you for your life. Pray now, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For good and good of all the Grant, we pray, O Lord our God, that we may always find delight in these pastoral mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to lord it yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers and the angelic hosts 
sing together the one ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. And to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given <coughs> up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, bury our bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes, Lord, to the needs of our brothers and sisters, Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who are falling asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. 
grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with, there with you forever. There in communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her blessed spouse in Joseph, and with all the blessed apostles and saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now, my dear friends, at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but of the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace, and we ask if you're watching us live stream, please put a note in the chat box. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, it is with faith in your love and mercy that we take your body and your blood. We thank you for giving your soul to us this morning. Let this gift not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and body. <coughs> And now, my dear friends, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my group, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us everlasting life. Amen. An act of spiritual communion for those watching from home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And we thank, we thank God, uh, Father, for being here to celebrate the next month for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. God.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. The wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me. But I lay, down, lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So as I said, I moved here in 2005. And I moved here from New England. Now, I don't know if you can tell from my accent. <laughs> but New Englanders had a hard time I was born in Greensboro, North Carolina, and raised in Lexington, North Carolina. And if you don't know where that is, just ask the barbecue connoisseur and they'll tell you. <laughs> so I was in, I, I lived in New England, and that was where I was the rector of my first parish, just outside of Boston. And I was, uh, I, I got away and Andover Mass at this, I swear, it looked like a, a castle. Uh, I don't know what it was, but it was a grand affair. It was in June, and it was 52 degrees and misty. I ain't fine. And so I knew the bride and groom, their parishioners in my parish, but I didn't know any of my guests. And so at the reception, I went in and grabbed a beer, went outside, and was at the, the fountain. So I mean, you pull up the screen, but it's this big gigantic fountain. And for whatever reason, I could tell you why. All the groomsmen were drinking beer around the fountain. So I went up and out. And I said, you know, how you doing, fellas? And they're like, fine, fine. And if you 
don't know very much about that area of the country. The predominant Christian denomination from Catholicism. And so I walked up and I, they said, Father, how are you doing? I said, Great, how are you guys doing? And, um, and I, I'm a priest, right? So I got to ask this question where do you go to church? <laughs> and they went, Well, we don't. <laughs> and well, where do you get raised in church? I mean, I've always been around late 20s, early 30s. Oh, yeah, we were we were raised in, you know, our lady, lady and whatever. And, uh, and they were all confirmed. And I said to them, because I think that this is a Holy Spirit-inspired moment, I said, well, what community claims you? <laughs> and, and they went, I said, who are the people that love you? And I could tell from looks on their faces, they had never thought of it in that way. One of the things I think we have to remind ourselves of is not who you are, but whose you are. You are the body of Christ. Now, we're still trying to figure this out, aren't we? Uh, one of my, one of my, uh, a, a guy I followed, he retired from his church outside of Maryland, Franklin. And it was all that Ed picked up. Ed retired, and then I followed after him. And he, he had this saying, I thought it was hilarious. Don't you think it's kind of peculiar whenever Christians get together, they get together and listen to other people's mail being read? <laughs> we get together to hear other people's mail being read, M-A-I-L. Get it? A reading from the letter of Paul to... <laughs> I mean, we're reading other people's mail. <laughs> now, I wish I could claim it. Stay claim to that saying that it's his head. Yeah, you know. But if you look at the New Testament, a uh, little bit of background here. I was raised Southern Baptist. Now, I had a, I had a prisoner to describe me as a Pisatostal. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you look at Paul's letters, and then First John that we heard this morning. All of them, we have to remind ourselves this: we forget this. These are fledgling, baby communities. They're still trying to figure out what this whole way of life is like. <laughs> I mean, just to set the tone, read 1 Corinthians. Uh, I don't know if you know very much about Corinth of antiquity, but it, to put it in the best sort of modern way of looking at it is that you know, you, there's, a, there's a commercial on TV that used to say, what, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Well, take that same notion and apply it to Corinth of its day. It was a community of just debauchery. Somehow or another, Christianity gets a toehold toe in Corinth. But they're still trying to figure out what does it mean to be followers of the way. Remember, that's what Christians were first called. And Paul says, what are you Corinthians doing? You're getting together and you're having communion where this couple here is over here having a feast of duck breast and, and blah blah and this, these folks over here don't have any food at all. What in the world are you guys doing? You got to share. You're so hung up on speaking in tongues that you forgot the greater message. And the greater message is, if I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, 
I am a plain and simple and noisy God. Love is patient, love is kind. And it's what set the early Christians apart. One of the things that we forget is that Christianity grew like wildfire for the first 300 years. Why? Because Christians loved completely selflessly. And it didn't matter who you were. They're going to bring you in, they're going to take care of you, they're going to claim you as their own. Oh, and by the way, ladies, it was one of the very few places in antiquity that you could go and not be sexually molested. In fact, Christianity went over and beyond and actually venerated virginity. Did you know that at one point in time we had an order of virgins? You know? We've got lay people right now, deacons, priests, and bishops, but we had other orders too. You see, in our culture, that's what we're fighting against, I think, is, and I'm, I'm not complaining about this, I, it's, and I, I, I'm part of it, but in America, capitalism, by its very nature, tells us he or she with the most toys at the end wins. No. No. You see, you live the life that Paul calls us to live, that First John calls us to live, that the Good Shepherd calls us to live, is to be in a community centered on love. But it's hard. It's really hard. I don't know about you, but I struggle to love some people. <laughs> well, they make it really hard. <laughs> and that's one of the things we've got to get over. In, in English, we have one word for love. Love. Man, I just love you so much. <laughs> now, hold that thought in your head, Boy, I love these hamburgers. <laughs> what? How can I have them? No. The love that the Bible talks about has nothing to do with feeling. It has everything to do with an act of the will. To do one of others. One writer put it this way, this is what we are fighting, the tide. In our society, it's the high achievers who succeed, the high earners who are respected, the haves and not the have not, who are our team leaders. Our society will always choose competition over cooperation, property rights over personal rights, concentration over distribution, and accumulation over purpose. The countercultural message of Christianity is the one who loves most evident in his or her action is the one who wins for God. Again, another writer put it this way. How much does your footprint weigh? Could it really be, as Jesus suggests, that we are rich only in what we give away? Secure only in what we relinquish. Great only in our wilderness. Strong only in our own good. Here's the question. If you know other languages, 
You know, not everything translates precisely. Well, in Greek, there's a word that we translate into one word. And in fact, it, it really can't be. And you may know the word. The word is koinomi. You remember where, where we say that and Paul says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. The word koinomia we translate as fellowship. Nah. No. I mean, after growing up in Baptist Church in rural North Carolina, we use that word fellowship as a verb and a noun. We're going to get the other fellowship together. <laughs> well, no. And here's the best translation I can come up with. It's a sentence. Community of the Holy Spirit, bound to one another and to God, through the love of the Father, forth the Son, all through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the best I can come up with. We are called as a body of Christ to love one another right here. That's what Paul is getting at when he's talking to his churches. If you can't, we're doing scrimmage right here, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to practice on one another. To quote, to quote Paul, to outdo one another in good. And to care for each other. You see, when I was in the parish, like a, a lot of parish priests, my congregation, both every congregation I've, I've served, it was going through the same thing as the Pistol Church National was going through. It was gray and it was bald. Bald. And I never forget, I had a senior warden come up to me. He was a real tall guy, and I know for the challenge. And he put his he put his uh, arm on my shoulder and said, Father Scott, what can we do to grow our church? The same thing that we've been called to do since the beginning of this movement. Love one another as Christ loves us. Now I don't know how Father Mario sent you out at the end of the service. But I'm going to say that go in peace to love and serve the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I'm going to amend that. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, starting with people in this room. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, even early begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one who is going to the apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead. And the life of the world. 
After each petition, please say, hear our prayer. Pray for the church, for an end to divisions among Christians, that God inspire us to continue our quest for Christian unity. Pray that all may be one. Hear our prayer. Pray for peace, for goodwill among nations, and that all people be treated with dignity and respect. Hear our prayer. Pray for our bishops, our clergy, our staff, and our lay ministers. Hear our prayer. Pray for the poor, the sick, the hungry, and the suffering. Hear our prayer. Pray for all who have died. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear our prayer. Pray for uh, the family of my father-in-law's best friend, Marvin, who recently passed away. Hear our prayer. Pray for the prayers for the Stanley family who are dealing with multiple issues. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. For my mother-in-law, Sue, who just got diagnosed with pancreatic cancer on Friday. Hear our prayer. I ask my friends, my brother-in-law's um, father, who is in ICU in a hospital up in Maryland. Hear our prayer. For our friends suffering from kidney failure. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. In gratitude for friendship, especially. Hear our prayer. Especially for Ann Martin as we celebrate our husband's divorce. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Greet one another as you feel comfortable. Thank you so much. Thank you, Grandma. Do y'all sing, or do you speak it? Speak. Let's just talk it for this time. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, According to his command, O oh Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O oh Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with ever blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Mark, blessed Peter, blessed John, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Jesus was known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The prayer of spiritual communion for the people at home. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus Christ, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and served the of God and the blood. Send us now into the world in strength and strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and single of our heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace is brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ. The great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father. The Son and the Holy Spirit remain, be with you this day, now and always. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. Happy birthday this week to Terry Salisbury, Kat McDonald, and Stanley Madison. This week's flowers are from Linda and Brown Carpenter in honor of Brown's birthday and their 44th marriage anniversary. <laughs> Fellowship today will be hosted by Anna Crosby and her grandchildren with the assistance from Fellowship. Please join us in the Fellowship Hall after the liturgy. Join us today for an immigration simulation offered by the Interfaith Immigration Legal Assistance Fund for Christian, adult Christian formation in the fellowship hall from 1215 to one o'clock. All are welcome. See Kay Ashby or Whitney McDaniel with any questions. We are still looking for a part-time Episcopal priest. If you know of any Episcopal priest that has a heart for ecumenism and is interested in a half-time position in beautiful Virginia Beach, please ask them to contact us. Have them check out our website page. We have some Easter lilies to be given away and planted. Flowers for adoption are in the back foyer corner by the St. Francis statue. Craft show at Ascension Church this Saturday, the 27th, from 9 to 3. Are there any other announcements? Oh, wait a minute. I have some more over here. Sorry about that. <laughs> Turn the page and see another asterisk. Uh, Queen for a Day. Fellowship will be celebrating Mother's Day on Sunday, May 12th by giving out an assortment of fresh carnations after liturgies, and we will be taking pictures. We want to thank Father Scott Baker for joining us today and leading us in the Episcopal service. <laughs> now, are there any other announcements? Bonnie? Everybody hear that? The discernment committee meets over there after service. That's it. Thank you. Did you say sermon committee? <laughs> it's like, my goodness, I, you want to review me already? Good gracious. <laughs> Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.